Welcome to our video. This time, we focus on Japan's defense and security. The following is a provisional summary of a speech given by Mr. Sugio Takahashi, Director of the Defense Policy Research Office, National Institute for Defense Studies, Ministry of Defense, Japan, on March 28 in Nagoya, Japan. On Increasing Severity of Global Security Environment and Challenges for Japan. Why do wars happen in the first place? The first is the fault of political leaders. In this Russia-Ukraine war, Putin is to blame. It is true that bad leaders are the reason, but if this is the only reason, there is no way to prevent war. Second, the state system is bad. There are countries with bad dictatorship, which cause wars. In this case, Russia is to blame. Some people believe that if democracy spreads, the world will become more peaceful. However, as we can see from the fact that the United States is fighting a lot of wars, democracies are not peaceful per se. We know that wars between democracies are very rare. There is an argument for peace through McDonald's. It is a kind of joke that if McDonald's spread around the world, there would be no war. McDonald's opens stores in peaceful and stable countries. So there will be no wars, but this was broken in 2008 when Russia invaded Georgia. Third, the international system is bad. It is not the politicians who are bad, nor the nations. The idea is that the world is to blame. The state has the greatest authority and power in the world. In domestic society, if you break the law, you will be punished. In the international community, However, it is a customary creation, and there is no one anywhere to punish you if you break it. Every country has a conflict of interest in increasing its economic and military power. What is a world without war? Two conditions are necessary. One is when all sides can be known, and when it is possible to predict who will win or lose in the event of war. No country usually starts a war it knows it will lose. The other is that promises are always kept. Whether the results of diplomatic negotiations to avoid war will be honored or not. Since there is no guarantee that they will be kept, it could be argued that it is better to fight. In this sense, the point is that there is no world in which war does not occur in the absence of a superstate authority over nations. That is why each nation has its own deterrent. Russia and Ukraine's intentions. The background of the Russo-Ukrainian War is the war between the Russian and Ukrainian republics, which were part of the former Soviet Union. It can be seen as a civil war in the former Soviet Union. Also, after the end of the Cold War, which was a conflict between capitalism versus communism, and the collapse of the Soviet Union, Eastern European countries wanted to become part of Europe and joined the European Union, EU, and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. The U.S. thought that since the spread of democracy would lead to peace in the world, democratizing the Eastern European countries would prevent war. This included Russia, which provided financial support and invested in resource development. The U.S. followed this policy in the 1990s and 2000s. Russia was able to revive economically. In contrast, Russian President Vladimir Putin emphasized the sphere of influence view. He recognized Ukraine and Belarus as part of Russia and sought to revive the former Soviet Union by incorporating them. In addition, China is rising and taking a confrontational path with the United States. For Russia, joining forces with China would give it a better chance of winning than the former Soviet Union plus Eastern Europe. In other words, the revival of the Russian economy and the emergence of China as a major power have made it possible to recognize Ukraine and Belarus as part of Russia and to aim for the revival of the former. Soviet Union by incorporating them. The problem is that the strategy against Belarus has been successful, but it is not working in Ukraine. The reason for this is that Ukraine now wants to be part of Europe.
said it was always part of Russia, and ten years ago there was a direction in which it wanted to be part of Russia. Then the Maiden Revolution, 2013-2014, a civil movement in Ukraine. And Russia's annexation of Crimea, 2014, led Ukraine to want to be part of Europe, not part of Russia. This war can be considered a war between Russia and Ukraine because the differences in who they are for Russia and Ukraine could not be repaired in any way. Future prospects. What will happen to the war? The current war has been at a stalemate since November 2022. If asked if the war has been going on for another year or still a year, it is still a year. If Russia's objective is the annexation of the Donbass region, then Russia will stop the war once it occupies this area. But if it is to weaken Ukraine and make it a vassal state as part of Russia, it will not end without destroying Ukraine as a society and incorporating it completely. We also believe that the possibility of a ceasefire is no longer a possibility. The point of the ceasefire talks a year ago was that some areas would be ceded to Russia. In exchange, Russia would withdraw and the international community, including NATO, would guarantee Ukraine's security. However, lessons learned from the Bukha massacre made it impossible for Ukraine to surrender the occupied areas to Russia. What is the direction to end the war? Will the war end if it is recaptured? Putin's war aims to incorporate Ukraine into Russia, and Ukraine aims to be part of Europe, not part of Russia. If so, Putin will not stop the war even if the occupied territories are recaptured. On the other hand, if Putin changes his mind and withdraws from Ukraine, the war will end tomorrow. This is because Ukraine has no intention of invading Russia. The only way to end the war is to change Putin's mind. I do not know in what form. I see little chance of political change or insurrection. When the Cold War ended, there were revolutions and overthrow of communist regimes in Eastern European countries, but that has not happened in Russia. In any case, if an event were to occur that would end the war, it could only happen in Moscow. It will not be weapons, but the power of information, the power of the media or it would be the power in a third country, such as the political upheaval that will take place in Belarus, the situation surrounding Japan, the severe security environment in East Asia has not changed. Looking at the distribution of missiles, Japan is the only country in the region that does not have missiles. The region is not only politically tense, but also has a high density of military power. Under these circumstances, will there be a Taiwan contingency? To sum up, it can be prevented, but there is a good chance that it will happen. China's current sea and air power is about 70% that of the United States. However, since the U.S. cannot deploy its entire military to Asia, the force ratio is not 10 to 7, but 5 to 7, which puts the U.S. at a disadvantage. If this is the case, China may think that it can win. This is where the Japanese factor becomes important. Even if it is 5 for the US and 7 for China, it would be 8 to 7 if Japan could make up the 3. Japan closing the gap would reduce the risk of war. The Russia-Ukraine war is teaching us many things. Economic activity will continue even in the event of war. It is the same with the Taiwan contingency. If the Chinese Communist Party starts a Taiwan contingency, if it loses, the Chinese Communist Party's system of governance itself could disappear. China will not be able to stop this war. Taiwan will not easily fall under the Chinese Communist Party's control. Since neither side can afford to lose, once the war starts, it will be a war that will never end. That is why it is important not to let this war start. That's all. A provisional summary of a speech given by Mr. Sugio Takahashi, Director of the Defense Policy Research Office, National Institute for Defense Studies, Ministry of Defense, Japan, on March 28 in Nagoya, 
Japan, on increasing severity of global security environment and challenges for Japan.